The sea slashed the ship with her salty sting, wind howling in accompanying rage, both in a vain attempt to stop a woman who has never listened to the word no. Captain Yang gritted her teeth, not in pain from her bleeding wounds, but in manic delight as the ship tipped over another wave, revealing the phantasmic maelstrom churning straight ahead. Captain, her lover and first mate, Hai begged, his plea turning into a bloody sputter. Captain Yang didn't want to turn her eyes away from the helm, but Hai's fingers were nearing the flintlock again. She kicked the gun away and leaned close to lips that had once seemed so sweet to her, now flecked with blood. She pulled the cutlass cleanly from his stomach, ignoring his cry of anguish as she lifted him onto his feet, pointing towards the ever-approaching whirlpool. Do you see it, my love? Her voice trembled, unholy ecstasy dilating her pupils, lit by the purple rays of sunset. The land only hides mortal treasures. If we want to find the secrets of the Black City, we must travel beneath Dilong's land, between Jialong's sea and Tianlong's skies, and only then will Fu Kanglong reward us with hidden treasure. Hai said nothing, to preserve his strength, every breath costing him a moment's agony. Captain Yang watched her crew with pride, each valiantly carrying out their duties without protest, even as the crashing of waves jostled men overboard. They came prepared to die on this journey. And they would, she knew, as only she was worthy of the Black City. The sun hid below the earth at last, leaving only a moonless sky and the bright lights of the city ahead. I can see it, Captain Young whispered, clutching both high and helm even tighter. I can see the lights of the city. Hai saw nothing, when he squinted through tear-bleared eyes, past the whirling mass of the maelstrom, and towards the coast of Samar. But, just before he lost consciousness, he caught glimpse of the reflection in Captain Yang's eyes. The ship teetered over and dipped into the black center of the maelstrom. The force knocked the crew into the air, and as Captain Yang's safety ropes snapped her back against the deck, her smile persisted even when her head cracked against the wood. The first thing Captain Yang noticed was that her wounds had healed. She was still missing three fingers, but the skin had closed and her side had a long brown scar running down the length. She stood up calmly. Captain Yang never panicked. Any woman faced by death enough times forgot the meaning of panic. She surveyed her surroundings. In the bed next to her was a sleeping high, his chest rising and falling in a way she had not seen since she first set out on this adventure. They were in a round, unlit room, lacking any furnishing or d-c-o-r, its clay walls leading to a single opening. Facing her, seated on the ground, was a figure. When Captain Yang's eyes landed on the figure, it stood and approached her. The person had long golden hair, feminine features, and a curiously smooth face, without a cleft above the lip. Despite the femininity surrounding them, they had a very masculine aura. They approached high and pressed two longs fingers against his wrist, then leaned down and kissed him, the blonde hair creating a shield between Captain Yang's eyes and Hai. When the person broke away, Hai's eyes were open. He stared at the person and uttered, Encanto, a spirit. The creature smiled, its lips parting to reveal sharp teeth. The Encanto gestured with its long hand, and for the first time in her life, Captain Yang obeyed the order of another. Hai followed the pair out of the clay room, leading into a thick forest. I have come seeking the Black City, Captain Yang said, ignoring Hai's hiss of disapproval. The Inkanko nodded, revealing another wide smile, and gestured towards the knot of a massive tree. With every step, the knot grew until a doorway formed, carved in elaborate wood. By the time Captain Yang and Hai stepped through, a magnificent city carved in gold lay in front of them, and Captain Yang never believed anything else had been there. Silver buildings reached into the sky, blotted out by clouds of iridescence, while roadways of bronze paved the way for horseless carriages to travel. Captain Yang reached down to touch a blade of grass, jolting as its glass edge pricked her finger. As other Inkanko swarmed Captain Yang, placing elegant silks and exquisite jewelry on her, Hai watched the blood turn the glass to gold. They climbed the steps leading to the Golden Palace, waterfalls cascading in streams of gold around them, carved dragons spewing breaths of gold beneath. This should be named the Golden City, Captain Young whispered, reverent. The only sight free of yellow was the distant sea at the base of the city. 
The palace greeted them with adornments, lavish food and servants to tend to them. They were quickly shown to the emperor, who sat behind a pale screen with an interpreter beside him. What is it you desire? The interpreter asked, his voice akin to one below water, the words bubbling from his throat. Captain Yang smiled. The weapons of the four kings. The lotus lantern of Sanqing Mu. Fire-washed cloths. From behind the screen came a deep laugh. The interpreter continued, those are trifles, Captain Yang. What are your true desires? Captain, but Hai's final plea was met with a hush. Captain Yang's lip trembled, a drop of blood balanced on the edge from where she had bitten it. I want the eight treasures. Especially Fu Kanglong's pearl. All of the Nkanko in view smiled, matching pointed teeth glimmering from the golden floor's reflection. All that you desire will be granted. And you. The first mate. Everyone's head swiveled to high. He swallowed and removed the heavy crown of gold that adorned his head. I wish only for a ship I can sail. Not one of gold, but of wood. There was a long pause, punctuated only by Captain Yang's scoff of disapproval. Very well, the interpreter told him. We can provide a crew, and? I need only myself and some hardtack, Hai said, referring to long-lasting biscuits that lacked all the flavor and splendor present in the Black City. By nightfall, Hai shouldered a satchel over his shoulder and began the long descent to the base of the city, where a ship bobbed in the ocean, waiting for him. Captain Yang watched him through one of the palace's many windows. He's a fool, the emperor said softly, coming up behind her. He brushed her hair away from her neck, and Captain Yang was unable to prevent the shiver that overcame her as she turned to face the Inkanko. The emperor was beautiful, with golden hair that reached the ground and crystalline eyes that shimmered between emerald and sapphire. He caressed her cheek with his fingers, their length reaching from her temple to chin. He pulled her in for a kiss, and when he broke away, his lips were painted gold. The emperor smiled, each tooth sharper than the cutlass that had pierced Hai's stomach. You're going to be so happy here. 